Good morning. I am Technical Sergeant William Lewis, military training instructor, and I will be your narrator for today's ceremony. As the flights move into position and for the safety and comfort of those around you, we ask that you refrain from entering the retreat pad and remain in your respective seating areas when taking photos during the ceremony. Do not stand or sit in the stairways unless entering or exiting the grandstand. Additionally, we ask that you do not stand at the bottom of the grandstands as well as the arena drill pad. At the conclusion of the ceremony, you may proceed onto the retreat pad after the flights are dismissed. Please be cautious when ascending and descending the bleachers. Utilize the handrails and watch for tripping, slipping, and falling hazards. Restroom facilities are located in the reception center and to the right of the flagpole. During this morning's ceremony, smoking and the consumption of alcoholic beverages is not permitted. At this time, please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. In the military, ceremonies are held to accord distinctive honors to national symbols or individuals on special occasions. These ceremonies are also used to display proficiency and state of training in a command and to promote teamwork and pride in the organization. They also contribute to public morale by displaying symbolically the strength and unity of the military in support of the nation. All of the movements that you will observe today are known as drill. The purpose of drill is to enable a commander or non-commissioned officer, such as the military training instructor, the ability to move their units from one place to another in an orderly manner. To aid in training by instilling discipline and habits of precision and response to the leader's orders and to provide the development of all leaders in the practice of commanding formations. To maintain proper decorum and respect for events such as this, we ask that you abide by the following standards while you are here. First, there will be times you will be asked to stand for the invocation, the playing of the national anthem, the Air Force and Space Force song, and the reciting of the Airman's Creed. Second, we ask that you remain silent during these times, reflecting on the price that has been paid for our freedom. Third, we ask that you pay respect to the flag during the national anthem. Military members and veterans in uniform will stand at attention and render a salute. Civilians should stand and place their right hand over their heart. Veterans and military members not in uniform may render a salute or place their right hand over their heart. After the last note of the national anthem, you may return your hand to your side. Thank you and enjoy today's ceremony. Now marching into position from the 331st Training Squadron, Flight 201, led by Master Sergeant Jonathan Ted Malumai, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Tamuning, Guam. Flight 200, led by Staff Sergeant Kevin Farnsworth, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Creston, Ohio. Flight 199, led by Technical Sergeant Jamar Hart, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Richmond, Virginia. Flight 198, led by Technical Sergeant Colton Marvin, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown Portland, Oregon.
from the 324th Training Squadron, Flight 195, led by Technical Sergeant Jonathan Spear, Military Training Instructor, hometown Wymore, Nebraska. Flight 194, led by Technical Sergeant Alberto Hernandez, Military Training Instructor, hometown Baldwin Park, California. Flight 193, led by Staff Sergeant Philip Bears, military training instructor, hometown Austin, Texas. Flight 192, led by Technical Sergeant Nicholas Walker, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. From the 322nd Training Squadron, Flight 199, led by Technical Sergeant Mark Gaden, Master Military Training Instructor, Hometown, San Antonio, Texas. Flight 190, led by Staff Sergeant Dijon Ross, Military Training Instructor Trainer, Hometown Jacksonville, Florida. From the 321st Training Squadron, Flight 189, led by Technical Sergeant Mitchell Van, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Jacksonville, Florida. Flight 188, led by Technical Sergeant Madison Smith, Military Training Instructor, Hometown, Fort Defiance, Arizona. From the 320th Training Squadron, Flight 187, led by Technical Sergeant Tiffany Todd, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Beverly Hills, Florida.
Flight 186, led by Technical Sergeant Zachary Hopper, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Weatherford, Texas. PT Excellence Flight, Flight 185, led by Technical Sergeant Christopher Martin, Military Training Instructor, Hopetown, Farmington, Missouri. From the 1st Delta Operations Squadron, Detachment 1, Flight 197, led by Technical Sergeant Isabel Childress, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Middleton, Delaware. Academic Excellence Flight, Flight 196, led by Technical Sergeant Ashley Anderson, Military Training Instructor, Hometown Houston, Texas. Air Force Basic Military Training conducts graduation events over the course of two days to celebrate the accomplishments of our newest airmen and guardians. These events recognize their transition into the profession of arms. We acknowledge the tradition of honor and legacy of valor provided by those who came before and inspire us still today. We would also like to thank the family and friends for their continued support that these graduates will be counting on as they serve our great nation in the years to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Morgan. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, we rejoice this glorious morning and the accomplishments of these soon-to-be airmen and guardians. We thank you for the loving support from their family and friends who cheered them on through this journey, many of whom have traveled from around this country to celebrate with them today. And we thank you, too, for the investment of time and energy from their MTIs over the many long days of BMT. We pray, with your help, that this is the dawn of a great era as these men and women go on to become the heroes of their generation who lead the way and truly are second to none. Bless them with safety and prosperity as they continue a long tradition defending freedom and justice for all. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to today's basic military training graduation ceremony. We would like to introduce our distinguished guests, beginning with the host for today's ceremony. The Commander, Air Force Basic Military Training and 1989 graduate of basic military training, Colonel Billy Wilson, Jr. The Senior Enlisted Leader, Air Force Basic Military Training, and 2003 graduate of Basic Military Training, Chief Master Sergeant Dan Anderson. Also in attendance with us today, the Deputy Commander, 37th Training Wing, Colonel John O'Dell III. The Acting Command Chief and 2004 graduate of Basic Military Training, Chief Master Sergeant Whitney Rogers. The Commander, Delta One, Colonel Peter Norsky, accompanied by his wife, Jessica. The Senior Enlisted Leader, Delta One, and 2003 graduate of basic military training, Chief Master Sergeant Paul Norris. 
The Inspector General, Air National Guard, Colonel Thomas Rude, accompanied by his wife, Linda. Although time does not permit us to introduce all of our distinguished guests, the 737 Training Group is proud to welcome each of you. We hope you enjoyed today's ceremony. This week, we have a special opportunity to recognize one additional and significant achievement, demonstrating the dedication of 23 of our graduates, who are being led by Staff Sergeant Nathan Bisset, Military Training Instructor, hometown Gainesville, Florida. Today's recognition is made possible by a partnership between the Department of Defense and Department of Homeland Security to allow active duty service members to become citizens under the Naturalization at Basic Training Initiative. To be eligible, a member of the Armed Forces must pass a comprehensive application process administered by the Department of Homeland Security, including a background check and personal interview to demonstrate high moral character and their knowledge of the English language. Applicants are also tested on U.S. history and government. Please hold your applause until all names have been announced. The Air Force is proud to recognize Mary Venz, Isad Tanguan, country of origin, Philippines. Fatai Dorojaye, country of origin, Nigeria. Samad Ajena Fuja, country of origin, Nigeria. Desmond Ungoran, country of origin, Cameroon. Krishna Kadka, country of origin, Nepal. Earl Jomil Tuazan, country of origin, Philippines. Jovan Riley, country of origin, Jamaica. Eric Norte, country of origin, Ghana. Janetta Tua Tamai, country of origin, American Samoa. Sierra Anang Johnson, country of origin, Ghana. Tori McCleary, country of origin, Jamaica. Olavisi Ajibode, country of origin, Nigeria. Nelson Inege, country of origin, Cameroon. Abdu Hafiz Ibrahim, country of origin, Benin. Caleb Mooney, country of origin, Kenya, Jesus Alejandro Briones Aguillon, country of origin, Mexico. Ashley Johnson, country of origin, Jamaica. Santiago Restrepo Camargo, country of origin, Colombia. Marianne So, country of origin, Senegal. Maureen Dichu, country of origin, Kenya. Alexis Leon D, country of origin, Philippines. Panapin Tangyun, country of origin, Thailand. Anaj Leon, country of origin, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, please help us congratulate the newest citizens of the United States of America. Musical support for this morning's ceremony is provided by airmen from the 321st Training Squadron performing under the direction of Staff Sergeant Jacob Wright, military training instructor, hometown Lano, Texas. These individuals have been hand-selected to perform for today's ceremony. In addition to completing all basic training syllabus and training requirements, 
Drum and Bugle Corps members commit additional training hours per practice throughout their weeks of training. Their extra effort and commitment demonstrate teamwork and the Air Force Corps value service before self. With each Drum and Bugle Corps performance, they honor the long-standing tradition of live music at formal military ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Master Sergeant Marks will now come forward and address our graduating class. And y'all came here for uh, warm weather and margaritas and now you got hot cocoa and overcoats, huh? How about that? Good morning, families and friends. Thank you for coming out to support your loved ones. Don't our airmen and guardians look great? All right, hey, y'all gave more energy to the wave. Let's try that again. Don't they look great? Before I begin, I would like to recognize our veterans. Veterans, if able, please stand and be recognized. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Without you, there will be no us. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize our MTIs. Please give them a round of applause. All right. These men and women show the tremendous responsibility of training our airmen and our guardians for countless hours, day in and day out. They sacrifice their most precious asset, their time, to ensure the next generation of airmen and guardians you see before you are prepared for their next phase. Thank you, military training instructors. Now, on to what the majority of you came for, your newest airmen and guardians. When you work in basic military training, everyone wants to know how the next generation of recruits fare. What is their mindset? Are they patriotic? Are they prepared for potential conflicts and so on? In the initial weeks when they arrive, it's difficult for us to determine their disposition because they're still missing you all, and the friendly face of their MTIs somehow don't evoke the same response as yours would. But after they get over missing home, I sit down with them weekly, and we discuss a myriad of topics. Initially, they were over-concerned with adapting to this new environment and what's in it for them. As our talks progressed through the weeks of training, a funny thing happened. Their personal concerns began to subside and were replaced with concerns for their fellow airmen and guardians. They wanted to know how to build cohesive teams. They wanted to know how to influence informal leaders, how to improve their flight's performance. We discussed the events in Ukraine, Ukraine specifically how being ill-prepared and underestimating your opponent could lead to an embarrassing outcome. They asked how the Air and Space Forces work jointly to achieve their objectives. We talked about hypersonic weapons and what we're doing to counter their use against us. All right, hang on with me just a minute. I'm gonna get you to your sweet tea and tacos. I'm trying to paint a picture here for you. Ladies and gentlemen, your recruits are asking about war games and scenarios in the event our comms are down and ways we can communicate until reestablish. We talked about defending our satellites in the space domain. Does this sound like they're ill-prepared? They're thinking of ways to keep us safe. Our special warfare recruits ask what new technology inhibits their ability to complete their mission in austere locations. 
Just think, seven and a half weeks ago, you couldn't even get them to make their beds, and now they're thinking about second and third order effects, right? And definitely how to protect our nation. And lastly, I still owe a few of them an update on Iran because we ran out of time because we discussed so many topics. The new generation will serve in their own capacity and their own right. I believe that we'll internalize what it means to support and defend our nation against those who seek to disturb our way of life. Understand that they are learning resiliency and grit as they will need it to face the challenges that lie ahead. Tonight, you should sleep well because you're protected by the world's greatest air and space force, powered by the world's greatest airmen and guardians. Congratulations on this huge milestone. If I could, I would trade places with you. I hereby acknowledge your completion of all graduation requirements and have recommended to Colonel Wilson and Chief Master Sergeant Anderson that they receive your coveted Airman's coin, which signifies your transition today from trainees to Airmen and Guardian. Congratulations. Military training instructors, you may proceed. At this part of the ceremony, the military training instructors will distribute the Venerable Airman's coin and for the first time, distinct Space Force coins to our Space Force graduates. The lore of military coins has many colorful suspected origins. However, a popular story stems from World War I, where American volunteers formed flying squadrons in France during the Great War. One of the volunteers was a wealthy lieutenant who took great pride in his service and had medallions cast in bronze with his squadron's emblem on them. He gave those medallions to every member of his unit. Not long after, one of the pilots was shot down behind enemy lines and was captured by a German patrol. The German forces confiscated the pilot's possessions except for the pilot's medallion that he wore around his neck. While in confinement in a small French village, the captured pilot took advantage of a nighttime bombardment by the Allies. He donned civilian clothes and escaped after crossing the front lines to safety. He came across a French outpost where he was initially thought to be a saboteur until he showed them his unit coin. The French forces recognized the unit emblem and instead of any harsher treatment, he received a bottle of wine. Today, several military units have developed their own coins and specific rules for them. Many organizations give out their unit coins to recognize outstanding performances and achievements. The coins the airmen and space professionals receive today are unique in that they originate here at the gateway to the Air Force and are only given to those who complete this rigorous course of instruction. On one side of the airman's coin, the original emblem of the Air Force resides as envisioned by General Henry Hap Arnold, one of the first military aviators and later commander of the Army Air Forces in World War II. Beneath the emblem, the year 1947, the birth date of the United States Air Force, and around the rim of the coin, the core values of the Air Force, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Inscribed on the other side of the coin is the newly recognized emblem of the Air Force, a symbol that honors the heritage of our past and represents the promise of our future. The emblem retains the core elements of the Henry Hap Arnold emblem, the Arnold wings, and the star within a circle. The modern effect of the emblem reflects our Air and Space Force today and into the future. Inscribed in a half circle above the contemporary Air Force emblem is the Air Force motto, Aim High, Fly, Fight, Win. And on the border of the coin, a reminder to all who see this is inscribed, awarded on the occasion of becoming an airman in the world's greatest Air Force.
Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Cox will now come forward and address our graduating class. Good morning. Let's get one more round of applause for the Airmen and Guardians. Welcome to the 37th Training Wing, home of Air Force and Space Force Basic Military Training. A big thank you to all the loved ones, the families, the friends, and the veterans in attendance here today. Seven and a half weeks ago, you entrusted us with your sons and daughters, and in that time, our military instructors inspired, motivated, and transformed them into the airmen and guardians you see here today. You will notice many of these changes. They are more confident, more disciplined, and mentally tougher. Throughout their time here at basic military training, your sons and daughters were sharpened under the watchful eye of our outstanding military training instructors. To the MTI teams from all squadrons, your tireless dedication, amazing leadership, professional example, you have motivated and inspired each airman and guardian in your flight. You have made the Air Force and Space Force better than ever. You took these 775 individuals and transformed them into the outstanding teams of professional airmen and guardians standing in formation today. Everyone, please join me in thanking them for their incredible work. Now to the airmen and guardians. Yes, you are airmen and guardians now. As you prepare for tomorrow's graduation parade and march down the bomb run, I want to remind you that completing basic military training is the beginning of your Air Force or Space Force journey. Take the lessons, the foundations, and the skills you learned here and apply them as you go on to technical training and throughout your time serving. The Air Force and Space Force will provide you with opportunities where you might feel ill-prepared. My one piece of advice is volunteer anyway. You are ready and you will succeed. You have entered our force at a time of significant change in our national security environment. Our adversaries continue to grow their military and asymmetric capabilities to challenge America. But I have no doubt America is up to this challenge because you are our greatest weapon system that our adversaries cannot match. Just like the airmen that have come before you to succeed in dynamic environments, you will succeed in our future challenges. You have learned about our Air Force heroes, such as Master Sergeant Chapman and his heroic deeds during the Battle of Takur Gar. But I'd like to go back to an operation from 1948, with the Air Force still in its infancy. At that time, the Soviet Union closed off road, rail, and water access to West Berlin, an island of democracy within the Soviet zone of East Germany. The Soviets believed the siege would starve the Western Allies out of the city, but the Soviets did not anticipate our response. For over a year, air power flew in 8,000 tons of supplies daily and kept the two million citizens of West Berlin alive and free. The Soviets ended their blockade as air power provided the decisive capability in this battle between great powers. The lesson for you is that ingenuity and applying capabilities in innovative ways can overcome a, deter a determined adversary. And I leave you with this. As we defend the Constitution, our freedom, and our way of life, remember your source of strength. Take care of yourself and your wingman and your guardian. In the years to come, I look forward to seeing your contributions to our great nation and serve alongside you. One team! Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Cox.
At this time, we would like to take this opportunity to recognize Basic Military Training's most outstanding performer. Someone who demonstrated their ability to successfully navigate all assessments, testing their physical abilities, academic aptitude, and adaptability to the military environment through multiple progress checks. This airman has surpassed all others in the challenges of training and has earned the distinction of being the top graduate of this class. The top graduate of this class is from the 324th Training Squadron, Flight 194, Airman Francisco Fuentes. He is from Frederick, Maryland and joined the Air Force to become an aerospace medical service specialist. In the stands cheering are his fiance, Maricela, daughter, Olivia, and father, Amadeo. His recruiter is Staff Sergeant Elatorio Flores from the 317th Recruiting Squadron, Frederick, Maryland. Please stand as a sign of unity as our top graduate leads us through the Airman's Creed. Instructors, place your flights at attention. Thank you. Please be seated. Instructors, place your flights at ease. This morning, we honor our heritage of military customs and traditions as we welcome our newest airmen into the ranks of the Department of the Air Force. There are two purposes for this morning's retreat ceremony. A retreat ceremony is a solemn event conducted at every United States military installation around the globe. It signifies the end of the official duty day, and today is symbolic of the end of training for our graduates. But more importantly, it is to pay respect to our nation's flag. When we offer our respect for our flag and to our national anthem, we have an opportunity to reflect on the democratic principles that have made our nation great. The meaning of freedom, dignity of the individual, the pursuit of happiness, and national unity all come to mind when you think of our flag. It is the symbol of our nation to the world. Military members have a special bond with the flag. These airmen are part of the flag's tradition because they symbolize the spirit and sacrifices of the military and dedication to the defense of this great nation and the principles it represents. When we salute the flag as it is lowered, we ask you to think, Think about the flag flying over Arlington and other national cemeteries. Think about the flag being carried into combat by service members who preceded us. Think about the freedoms Americans enjoy today. Freedom without precedent in the history of the world. The men and women who stand before you today represent the projection of the strength behind our flag. Our flag security detail consists of members from the 324th Training Squadron, led by Master Sergeant Damaris Strong. 
Our commander of airmen is Master Sergeant Michael Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the sounding of retreat and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem. The flag stands for peace, honor, truth, justice, and freedom. In the armed forces of the United States, during the ceremony of retreat, the flag is lowered, folded in a triangle fold, and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out at the ceremony of Reveille. The flag has been torn to strips and used as bandages for wounded combatants on the battlefield. 
It has been placed in the trembling arms of a grieving parent at the grave of their fallen son or daughter. It has flown at half-staff to honor our military members. The flag has flown in every battle of every war for more than 200 years. It has flown at Valley Forge, Shiloh, and Gettysburg. It was there at San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, in the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, on the beaches of Normandy. It was waved at Okinawa, Korea, Vietnam, Somalia, Kuwait, Iraq, and in Afghanistan. The flag has been burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that America has helped set free. Yet, it remains invincible. Please remain standing for the playing and singing of the United States Air Force and Space Force song. Congratulations on achieving this historic milestone that marks the beginning of your career. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seating area. The graduates will be dismissed momentarily. We ask that you refrain from running onto the retreat pad and please use caution when descending the bleachers. Town pass ends at 20 hundred hours. When dropping off graduates, please stay in your vehicle. Family members are not authorized to enter any training area. Thank you, and please enjoy your stay at 37 Training Wing, Joint Base, San Antonio, Lackland, Texas. <laughs> Airmen and Guardians, if you lost a flight cap, report to the podium to retrieve it. Top graduate, report to the podium to retrieve your certificates. All graduates are now released to their families. <laughs> 